Speaking of which, the man is with us right now from the racetrack to the studio. Bob McClure joining us here on the program. Welcome to the show, Jason Portwando. We're going to take you through some handicapping a little bit later on, but we got to speak with Bob off the top here. And um, uh, before we get into anything, a quick word on that effort last night by that little guy. Yeah, he was really good last night, but uh, his first two starts were really easy. He finished up real strong and against pretty good horses like Stag Party and them. So That's right. I was pretty confident with him going into it. Uh, Late in the mile when I pulled the plug, yes. it was the first time he'd ever had his head in front. And okay. He got a little lost, so as soon as I pulled them, he kicked right back into gear again. Just like young kids, eh? Yeah, you exactly. just gotta do what it, do what you gotta do. Get that focus, get that attention. All right, so you get the victory last night. Uh, a couple of victories. B Stormy was another one off the top there. B Stony, I should think of the horse's name is, but the two-year-olds, right? I mean, as hard as it is for drivers to try and figure them out, trainers as well, even handicappers, it's tough sometimes. Yeah, absolutely, and from. Uh, the first baby race to about the second or third start, they can change so Unbelievable, much. yes. So, yeah. Well, you're now a regular on this circuit. Welcome, officially. Great to have you with us. And uh, right off the hop, let's talk about the decision. LeBron had his, and, you know, you're taking your talents to this circuit. And how would you assess things so far? Oh, I've been very happy. Um, actually, I thought I'd be spending a lot more time on the couch, but... Uh, <laughs> You know, I've been very busy and uh, very fortunate to have uh, really good people supporting me, and uh, I couldn't be happier with the transition. Proof is in the numbers. Let's uh, take a look. I mean, uh, I don't know if this surprises you or if this is you were expected to be, but you're right in the mix of uh, some pretty good company right there. Yeah, I, I, it is surprising to me. I mean, uh, those are the best drivers in Canada. So, um, you know, like I say, I didn't think it, I would make the transition that easy. Mm -hmm. But the people that were behind me made it a lot easier. So without the support of them, owners, trainers, grooms, uh, it wouldn't have been that easy. A lot of people helped get you to this point, obviously, as you talked about. Uh, 2016 leading dash driver in this country, I think it was 576 wins. Obviously, guys like a Dean Nixon to thank. Uh, he's been there for you in your corner quite a, you know, quite a long time. But since coming here, we add in the name of uh, Luke Blay as well. Yeah, uh, Dean and uh, Luke, they've been uh, instrumental in my career. And... Uh, Dean especially has been there for a long time and he was you know the a huge factor in me coming here he had a big barn and he uh, he said to me I was coming on Fridays and driving them all and he said uh, kind of got mad one night I think actually and, <laughs> and said I got 19 horses here and no drivers so why don't you just come down here I said oh okay so anyway he he really made the uh, decision a lot easier but uh, even the people before Dean and Luke you know uh, they put down the top driver, you know, I was, I was at the top when they uh, put me down, but the people who put down, you know, a kid, you know, just yeah. starting to drive, I think uh, I owe as much to them as I do to anybody, you know, people like Gary Kingshot, Chad Milner, uh, Greg Graham, Mike Kwiatkowski, uh, those people didn't have to use me, and they didn't really have a reason to use me, other than maybe I'd warm up, <laughs> so, <laughs> but uh, I owe people like that and many others, uh, as much as I do the Luke Blades and Dean Nixons. You pretty much did everything you could do anyways on the B's, right? So I think it was uh, time for you to step up to the A's and it's been a nice transition. Uh, welcome addition as well to this driving colony. We have such a, uh, an amazing blend of youth and veterans. So it's uh, nice to see that you're smack dab in the middle of things. Uh, let's talk about some of these equine athletes that have uh, helped with this success. Uh, most recently, Powerful Chris comes to mind. And here's a little girl that uh, she had her game face on the other night, wow. Yeah, she seems like a real talented filly. I said before in the interviews, uh, I was trying to keep her quiet in both the qualifiers because she seemed a little rammy. You noticed that, yeah. I'm starting <laughs> to think now that maybe they just weren't going fast enough for her. But, but she, uh, she's nowhere near the bottom there, and uh, hopefully she stays sound and healthy all year. I think it'll be a fun year for her and John. Yeah, John Pentland, uh, one of the uh, many good guys of this game, and that was very impressive. And, and that's the beauty of two-year-olds. You talked about how they can change from week to week, day to day, race to race. And, yeah, who knows just how good that little girl could be. So you have the future ahead with young ones. We talked about the success last night with the juveniles as well. Uh, Grand Circuit-wise, maybe give us a couple of horses that, you know, sort of have you a little bit, uh, you know, excited for 2018. Well, uh, driving uh, emoticons has been a lot of fun. Um, you know, she, she tangled with the big girls, and uh, it's fun to be a part of those races. And I know Warwe Rue is a very nice horse, and he's going to be in the Maple Leaf Trot here at this track. So looking forward to that. And, uh, you know, uh, some two-year-olds coming along that, you know, might be right on the edge of that or involved in that, and uh, hopefully get down to the Breeders' Crown with some of them. 
Motocon looked really good on this night, winning that uh, elimination of the Armbrough flight. Uh, clearly, she missed you tonight because uh, things did not work out as well for Luke down at the Meadowlands. Race number one, by the way, was the Miss Versatility. She was third in behind Caprice Hill and Broadway Dawn. I'm just pointing that out. That's all. Yeah, maybe <laughs> uh, something, uh, yeah. an issue there, but uh, I'm sure it wasn't she me she's you. missing. <laughs> she misses you. That's what it is. Uh, where are we root? You finally got the better of Dancer Hall. You guys have been battling back and forth, it seems like, week to week. Other good ones in this preferred classification as well, but uh, in that last start, you got to the front, and that was it. Does he have a preferred style well, he can he, win from, you know? He, uh, he, I don't know how... I wouldn't say he's lightning fast, right. but he's deep, and he can go forever. Uh, I think if we ever had a distance race, That's he'd a good run away with it. Really? Okay. Yeah, but the, the first couple of weeks there, Dancer Hall sat on my back and sprinted by. So, and then the next week I said, I'll change it up. And I said, I'll come at him. I let him cut it and I come right. first up. And I mean, it just got too soft and it turned into a sprint. So this week I said, I'm going to go as far and fast as I can and <laughs> see if he can come get me. <laughs> but anyway, it worked out. But I mean, he was really on his game that night. I mean, geez, uh, there was nobody around you. Yeah. I mean, it was just way too easy. Were you looking back, like, wondering where Silvan was? Because yeah, you probably were expecting him at I, some I, point. I, I thought he'd show up, but we never really slowed down for him to make a big move at us. But um, I knew I had some distance coming out of the turn, and I figured we were going fast enough to hold him off. But he's just like a big train. He's, he's one of the biggest horses I ever drove and strongest. A big motor. Yeah, wow. All right, impressive stuff. Well, tonight's going to be a, a very busy night for you. Uh, some of the... Uh, other drivers are not here, as we talked about. Big night at the Meadowlands. Doug McNair not here. Louis Waugh not here. Trevor Henry not here. All 11 you're going to suit up for. Um, if you had to maybe talk about a top three, who would be the first one? Uh, I think American Hustle. He's uh, really coming around right now. Uh, I think he's got 350 miles in a row. And uh, last week he was second in 50, yes. just beat. But he, uh, he actually had a little bit of a tie-up issue that week. So I think this week, I think he will be... He's sitting on a 49 mile, and the conditions were right one night. Two back, here's how good uh, he can be. And I know that you've had some choices to make, right? I mean, there's been a couple times where he's been in a field where you've got three or four horses to decide uh, between, and you've opted for this guy, and he was really good a couple starts back. Last start, you know what? He was good again, but simply second best behind, that was it? Red John. Red John, that's right. I can remember who it was. I know Phil, that's right. Phil was on the front. And okay, so American Hustle, maybe uh, shoot us a couple others uh, quickly. Uh, Baraki and Champagne Filler in tonight, and they're two with a lot of back class. So I'm looking forward to driving them too. Yeah, Champagne Phil, yeah, he's pretty cool. Yeah, Baraki, geez, he almost yeah. lit up the board at a big number with her last time. I, uh, I got out late. I couldn't believe how fast she was going down the stretch when she shook loose. She, I think she was going faster the last eight than she was the first eight leaving the gate. She was absolutely flying. And uh, if there was another pylon, we had it. So, <laughs> wow. uh, she, but she's. I, I think uh, the other time I drove her, she won too, and I absolutely love her. She's as tough like and classy line. as uh, they come, so I, I always enjoy driving her. Yeah, geez. Well, you know what? You're pushing all the right buttons, making yeah. all the right decisions. Um, you've come a long way, over 2,000 wins. Speaking of which, Princess Jules, she got you that career 2,000th win back at uh, the airport oval. Yeah. She's in the go tonight for Jimmy Walwood. Yeah, yeah. She's, she, uh, she looks like she's in pretty tough. Yeah. So. Hopefully we have a little bit of racing luck there. Over 2,000 wins. There's a, a lot on that resume. Still a lot more to come, but let's rewind the hands of time. And uh, does the name Southwind Vavoom mean yeah. anything? All right, let's roll it. Pressure now. Vacation day in the pocket. Don't know chip to the outside. Fourth needs to do some work here. 125 and four in the stretch. Southwind Vavoom on the outside, taking it to Folktale, trying to battle back, but can't stay with him. Southwind Vavoom, first over Crush, but here comes Don't Know Chip on the outside, bearing down late. Bob McClure and Southwind Vavoom, deeper go Don't Know Chip, a final lunge on the outside. Don't Know Chip coming on, Southwind Vavoom, held on. Then I'm getting no boost gumps. Yes, I said boost gumps, watching it, and I'm, it's not even me. That's a pretty cool sight right there. Uh, you knock off Tietrick by a head. You also beat in that field Campbell, Sears, Miller. Not bad. Yeah. How cool is that? That, uh, that was an incredible animal, that horse. Um, and I miss him a lot. Uh, I was so young and uh, naive. 2011. To think, to think that the game was that easy. Yeah. <laughs> but that horse made it that easy. And uh, I'd give anything to have that horse right now because he got the worst drives you could imagine. <laughs> but he always oh, seemed to geez. persevere. But... 
he was the nicest horse to drive. He was two fingers, strong, fast. And uh, like I say, I didn't appreciate him at the time, but I sure do now. <laughs> uh, I have a question, though. Was, that a, was it really you that night? Because we're going to yeah. show some more footage here. And uh, what's, yeah. what's up with this? <laughs> yeah, my one Meadowlands race, and they put Eric Goodell up. Yeah, that's nice. I was like, uh, were you driving in his colors or something? Was, that, was <laughs> no, it your colors? No, it was my so, colors. So well, I don't understand. How could they have that? You guys look nothing alike. Yeah, well, apparently somebody thinks we do. <laughs> we saw that. We're like, Eric Goodell, what the heck's going on? But yeah, that had to be obviously a cool moment. You've had a lot of uh, great things happen. And as talked about, the future looks really good. Appreciate you doing this. Officially, welcome. And uh, best of luck tonight and the rest of the way for 2018. Well, thank you very much. Thanks for having me. All right, Bob McClure, a busy guy tonight. He will sit behind 11 different equine athletes. A busy one as part of this Saturday night program right here, Woodbine Racing Live. We'll talk about some of those races after this quick timeout.